For many years now, the king of sub £3,000 diving watches has always been the Tudor Black Bay. Others have come close, but the unavoidable desirability, fantastic execution of a clean aesthetic and its impressive quality has meant that Tudor has dominated for years. But now, a darling of the diving watch world has recently received quite the upgrade, challenging the reigning king in a huge way. So the first question you might have is, why have we waited until now to put the RS Aquis against the Tudor Black Bay? Well, the most obvious reason is the recent price increase for the Aquis, as it's now £2,700 versus the Black Bay 41, which is £2,840. This reflects a £1,100 price increase on the previous Aquis models. The reason for this? Well, the Oris is now powered by the in-house calibre 400 movement, which boasts some seriously impressive stats. To be honest, this isn't the first time we've thought of making the Oris vs Black Bay comparison. However, previously, with such core differences such as price point and the movement used, the outcome was always going to be rooted in financial logic. But now things are different. Oris is now commanding Tudor levels of DOSH, which begs the question, has the underdog just become the top dog? Let's start with the one many of us are aware of and already know its strengths, the Tudor Black Bay. This release from Tudor marked a huge turning point for the brand, as it offered the desirable looks previously only found with vintage diving watches in an obtainable and presentable modern package. Dimensions are universally appealing at 41mm wide, with 14.8mm as a thickness and a lug width of 22mm. This version of the Black Bay comes with the MT5602 COSC movement, which provides 70 hours of power reserve, vibrating at 28800 vibrations per hour with a silicon balance spring. A welcomed and significant movement upgrade when compared to other standard Swiss options. Tudor was first created to be the sister brand to Rolex, and even today releases from each manufacturer do cross-pollinate. It really is impossible to put a value on this connection that Tudor has, but that shared DNA is huge for Tudor, and arguably is one of the reasons why it holds the number one spot. So what are some of the positives and the negatives for the Tudor Black Bay 41? Well, one aspect that is consistent throughout all of the Black Bay range is balance, in every sense of the word. From styling to price point, brand awareness and quality, you really do get a little bit of everything here. The details and construction on this watch are fantastic. There's no clumsy date windows, there's no unnecessary modernisation, just exactly what people are looking for with no compromise. The movement is tough and continues to tick away for over double a standard automatic movement. And the bezel, well it remains one of the easiest and most enjoyable bezels to use. The standard 22mm lugs on this watch also mean that you have a huge amount of options when it comes to changing the look up for a new strap. Be sure to head over to the Watch Gecko Online magazine to see a few strap suggestions for the Tudor Black Bay. But, as we mentioned earlier, possibly Tudor's biggest positive is that connection to Rolex. That assumed value it brings means it's incredibly hard not to default to just picking up a Black Bay. But the watch is not without its faults. Specifically the 14.8mm thickness comes to mind, as it most certainly doesn't go unnoticed on the wrist. And if we're being totally honest as well, you could make a case for the dialless watch being a little bit plain and safe. The amount of praise it has received over the years has resulted in them flooding the market. Chances are if you're catching the tube in London, you won't be more than a few metres away from another Black Bay owner. Yes, the Tudor Black Bay, with its desirable history, fantastic execution and solid movement, make it a deserving champion. Three years later, it's still clear as day as to why this is the top pick for sub £3,000 diving watches. That is until Oris upgraded the Aquis. Let's move on to the rising star in the two to three thousand pound price point, the RS Aquis calibre 400. Up until recently, the Aquis was commonly available with just a Salita powered movement, with a price tag around one thousand six hundred pounds. It always had a unique aesthetic, which has won the hearts of many collectors. But as of 2020, the Aquis date was upgraded and made available with their new in-house calibre 400 movement. This new movement is pretty serious, as it offers features that actually mean something to the wearer, with tangible, noticeable overhauling. A double barrel setup provides 5 days of power reserve, there's further anti-magnetic properties, 
and finally a 10 year service time frame with the same warranty window. Like we said, not just impressive stats on paper, but actually useful additions and expectations that make wearing a mechanical watch still practical. It's also within COSC, although it's not officially COSC certified. At 43.5mm wide, with a 50mm lug to lug, the watch is far from small from paper. With a 13.4mm thickness, it's bang on the money though for a modern diving watch. So what are some of the positives and the negatives of the Oris Calibre 400? Well, the first noticeable difference between the watches is just how much more eye-catching and appealing the Oris Calibre 400 looks. We're not just talking about the fact that this is blue, but rather how Oris have paid attention to the details and executed them. On or off the wrist, this is a beautiful watch to look at, thanks to its surprising use of polishing on the strap, its dazzling deep sunburst dial, the ceramic bezel, and the multifaceted hour markers. You don't need to be deep into horology to know that this is an attractive watch. Proportions aside, the case of the Aquis is simply gorgeous, with depth and bold design choices which just work so well. Iris have managed to create something that is visually impactful, with its broad crown guards and chunky transition to the bracelet. But they haven't gone overboard. Remember this watch is just over 13mm thick. Sure that 43.5mm width sounds a lot on paper, but slip the watch and secure that deployment buckle on the wrist, and it almost reduces down to the Black Bay's 41mm size. The difference in case size is far more noticeable off the wrist than on. Chances are, if you're considering a 41mm Black Bay, you'll be able to pull off the 43.5mm Oris. As you might expect me to say, the new Calibre 400 movement has been a dream to wear, and actually look at via its display case back. Thanks to those double barrels, I enjoyed five blissful days without worrying about whether the watch would still be telling the right time in the morning, all while not compromising on vibrations per hour. Perhaps more importantly, I didn't have to worry about leaving this watch next to any of my devices that might have a magnet in it. The iPad keyboard case, the iPhone 12, and my AirPods are all within a few meters of me and didn't really cause any unwanted stress thanks to the Calibre 400's anti-magnetic properties. There are a few quirks with this watch though, with the first being the strap situation. Rather than standard straight lugs that use a spring bar, the Oris has larger fixed lugs and uses a centre link gap to attach the strap. This was actually upgraded further with this new version of the Aquis, as it now has a quick change system involving a clasp which wraps around the fixed bar, meaning that you don't actually need any tools to change the strap. It takes a matter of seconds. The result is neat, clever, and actually a positive for the watch, but it will mean you are limited by default to official Oris straps. The other point is that this is an attention grabbing watch to wear. There is a notable increase in polished surfaces here when compared to the Tudor, which won't appeal to everyone. It's also far from understated, which in turn means it's just not as versatile as the Tudor Black Bay. So, which should you go for? Well, these are two of the most capable, usable watches available for mid £2,000 today. Both feel like they can withstand anything life can throw at them, and in their own right, look the part. The Tudor comes with an obvious lineage of perceived value thanks to its well-known brand name and connections to its bigger brother. In recent years, Tudor has effectively been moved away from the shadows from Rolex, but it does still retain that desirability of the relationship. For some time now, the Aquis has been regarded as one of the best value propositions. With the watch only going from strength to strength, it's starting to feel like the Aquis is now at a price point that it deserves to be. A lot of the final decision making, in fact I'd say about 90% of it, will be down to personal preference, so it's difficult to categorically tell you which one you should buy. Tudor offers historical importance, versatility, and a slither of icon status, whereas the Oris offers modern watchmaking, increased unique style, and a complete, arguably more interesting package. Although this Black Bay isn't a 2020 release like the Oris is, the latest Tudor watches still use movements with identical important statistics. In terms of watchmaking, Oris has leapfrogged Tudor, offering a far better power reserve, longer service intervals, and more practical features in a thinner case. It's a glimpse into the future of how watchmaking and the artistic appeal can still retain a usable purpose without it becoming a relic. From top to bottom, the Aquis Calibre 400 is coherence in its purest form. 
The Tudor Black Bay is the safe, obvious choice, and to be fair, there's nothing wrong with that. But the Oris tells the world that although you can afford a Tudor, you went for something different. Tudor and Rolex fanboys look away, as I think we might have a new number one. To find out more about both of these watches, be sure to check out our in-depth comparison on the WatchGecko online magazine, as well as each brand's websites. We'll leave some links in the description below. We'd like to thank Oris for sending the new Aquastate Calibre 400 in for review on loan. Be sure to let us know your thoughts on which you would buy in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.